Amaterasu. She's probably the most famous goddess from the Japanese religion, and it's understandable. She is the goddess of the sun after all, and the sun is where we get most important things of our life. It provides light for our food to grow, it keeps us warm, and you know, those two things keep us alive, so that's pretty helpful. Every polytheistic culture on the planet had a sun deity, and almost every culture venerated the sun in some sort of way, and the Japanese are no exception. Interesting note about the Japanese religion though. Most sun deities around the world are masculine. Gods of the sun, Ra, Apollo. But for Shinto, the sun deity is a goddess, Amaterasu, feminine. So kudos to the Japanese for being so far ahead of the time on feminism? I don't know. Anyway, let's see what stories are told about Amaterasu. Amaterasu is the daughter of Izanagi and Izanami. They have their own story, which I'll get to another time, but all you need to know for now is that they had three children. Amaterasu, the goddess of the sun, is the oldest and most mature child. Sukuyomi is the god of the moon, and I assume he's kind of the quiet middle child, because he doesn't show up much in many myths. And Susanoo is the god of the winds. He is the party sibling and doesn't care what the person in charge says. He likes to stick it to the man, that sort of thing. Because of their contrasting personalities, this caused a lot of friction between Susanoo and his sister. Susanoo liked to destroy things for fun, while Amaterasu wanted to maintain order and keep the people slash kami safe. Also, quick side note, kami is often translated as god, but sometimes it doesn't work. A better translation would be more spiritual beings, who are still powerful, but not godlike. Kami as god though works for characters like Amaterasu and Susanoo though, because they basically are gods. Anywho, one day Susanoo was causing mayhem in the Celestial Palace. Amaterasu threatened to kick him out of their home, but Susanoo said he didn't mean any harm, and to prove it, he would create five new male kami. I assume he was doing this so that way these new kami were supposed to clean up his mess so he wouldn't have to. Amaterasu agreed, and Susanoo took one of her necklaces of 500 beads and ate the whole thing. He then spat out five new male kami just like he said he would. Amaterasu was impressed, but also very pissed off that her necklace was gone, so she took her brother's sword and ate it. After deep-throating her brother's sword, after eating her brother's sword, she spat out three new female kami. They decided to send these kami down to Earth though, probably because they were both horrified and embarrassed at what they just did. Fun fact though, these kami would eventually marry humans and eventually the Japanese nobility would descend from these families. After that whole fiasco, Susanoo continued to live in the Celestial Palace, but his days were numbered. On one day while he was causing a ruckus, Susanoo thought it'd be funny to throw a divine horse into his sister's room. Classic sibling move, am I right? He takes the horse and chucks it right into her room. And as you can imagine, Amaterasu was furious. She is just sitting there, quietly weaving, minding her own business, thinking about whatever sun goddesses think about, when all of a sudden, a horse flies into her room and just completely wrecks the place. She was so upset that she didn't even yell at her brother. She just ran away into a dark cave to hide from everyone. While Amaterasu was in the cave, people started to notice that the sun wasn't rising, which made both the kami and the people very worried that crops wouldn't grow. Eventually, the kami found the cave where Amaterasu was hiding, but they couldn't get her out. They tried placing a bunch of chickens around to fool her into thinking the dawn was there, but she didn't care about the chickens. Then, some kami placed down a mirror, encrusted with jewels and covered in fine white clothing. They also asked the goddess Ama no Zume to do a striptease, and she happily complied. All the kami gathered around and Ame no Zume started to do the strip dance, so they all started cheering. Amaterasu was curious as to what all the commotion was about and poked her head outside. While taking a look, another strong kami grabbed her shoulder and pulled her right out of the cave. A few other kami rolled a boulder over the entrance so that she wouldn't go back in. All of the kami then cheered and begged Amaterasu to stay outside of the cave, which she agreed when she realized how many people missed her. It should be no surprise that the first thing she did upon returning to the Celestial Sky Palace was banish her brother from heaven. Don't worry about Susanoo though, he has his own adventures which we'll get back to in a future video. Another story tells of Amaterasu tasking her son, Amano Oshi Ohimimi, who I will refer to as Omano for short, with the duty of ruling Japan. 
Amano went down to Japan, took one look, and said, Nope, I am not dealing with this crap. Amaterasu and the other gods met at a council and decided to send another god, Amano Ohiki, to conquer Japan. When he got down though, he immediately forgot what he was doing. Kind of like those moments when you walk into a room and you just completely blank on what you had to do. That's basically what happened to him. After three years of no response from Amano Ohiki, they sent Nanakime down in a form of a chicken. When Namakimi found Amano Hohoki though, Amano Hohoki shot the chicken with an arrow so powerful it launched him all the way back to heaven. When the kami found Nanakime now dead, they threw the arrow right back at Amano Ohiki and it hit him straight in the heart, killing him instantly. Now a third council was called and they decided to send down two kami. Take Mikazuchi, the god of thunder, and Fusutu Nuchi, the god of fire. Those two went down to Japan, busted down the front door of the old Earth King's palace, and said, Listen, Earth King, the sun goddess wants her son to be the new king, so we advise you to step down. Otherwise, you're going to be in for some serious hurt. The Earth King was understandably terrified at this and asked his sons what he should do. The oldest said to surrender, but the youngest said they should defend their honor and attack the thunder god. Take Mikazuchi easily defeated the younger son and the king surrendered the throne. Man, these two completed in one day what that other kami failed to do in three years. Somebody give these guys a raise or something. When the two kami returned to the celestial sky palace, they told Amaterasu of their victory. She was thrilled and offered the throne to her son, Amano. Hopefully now he'll take it, she thought. It's being handed to him on a silver platter, so why wouldn't he? Surprisingly though, again he refused. And I can only imagine his mother's shock and rage. He must have noticed how upset his mother was though, because he quickly said his son, Ninigi, would take the throne instead of him. Amaterasu's grandson agreed and he went down to rule Japan. From him, eventually a man known as Emperor Jimu would be born, and he was the first emperor of Japan. And it is through Jimu that all Japanese emperors claim to be descended from Amaterasu. Well, at least up until World War II, when the US beat Japan and part of the surrender terms was that the imperial family had to revoke their divinity. Well, that's Amaterasu for you. Obviously, there's a whole lot more. Shinto is a massive and ancient religion with so much to look into, and I really want to come back to it. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you want to see more, and have a good one.